Hey everyone, Dr. James Lyons-Weiler coming to you from the WWDNYK living room, I guess. Uh, we're in the middle of a move and so we don't have a studio here, but uh, you know, with recent events, I have to uh, have to do a podcast on this um, because I'm very, very concerned. We're entering into seriously dark times. The Biden administration and Anthony Fauci and the public health machinery and Big Pharma are ushering in a new dark ages. It's really clear to me that the balance of science is at risk. It's never been more clear to me that as we proceed with our research, I'm, I mean, we, the scientists, objective scientists who are not in bed with pharma and have financial interests. As we proceed along the path of publishing and making our science available, and as that science accumulates in journals, two things are happening. One, we're finding problems with vaccines. Two, they want to destroy that information. And there's two ways that they're trying to destroy that information. First way is to have the study retracted. There is specific targeting retraction. And I just did a whole podcast on it, just broad, uh, published a podcast on it, introducing the concept of what I call ghouling bias. If you have a retraction bias in a body of literature, that means that the meta-analysis in the future will not be reflective of the actual knowledge base that exists. And so ghouls go from journal to journal to journal, haunting and seeking out articles that show results that they don't like, and they fight to get them retracted. They're, they're very ghoulish because they tend to be anonymous. Under the claim that the anti-vaxxers are going to attack them, in the meantime, they're out there attacking objective scientists as anti-vaxxers with their identity known in, blog, in the blogosphere. It's kind of psychopathic, actually. But the second way that they're destroying information is more concerning because it impacts a lot more people impacts hundreds of millions of people, in fact. The second way that they're destroying information is that they're working overtime to bias what you're allowed to see. What are you allowed to see? You can't even form an opinion about something that you can't see. And this is censorship. And the censorship that they're doing includes the Biden administration's call to Facebook to only allow posts that regurgitate the CDC's mantra, vaccines are safe, vaccines are effective. And to not allow and disallow other science that are otherwise unrelated to vaccines, such as the efficacy of early treatment of hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. It's becoming truly insidious when we see, you know, when we see it coming to a head with Anthony Fauci, you know, showing contempt of Congress, lying to Congress as he's done before, right? He said that uh, they never funded gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute for Virology. Right to Rand Paul's face, he said that. And Rand Paul found, I'm sure was supplied with evidence that that was a lie, and he called Dr. Fauci out on, on the lie. And so Fauci did what liars do, is they prevaricate. He tried to argue a different attack a different uh, topic, completely unrelated to what Rand Paul was talking about, to try to straw man argument. So when it comes to a head like that, right in front of everybody's eyes, and the mainstream media then says, well, you know, Fauci schooled Rand Paul by saying, you don't know anything, right? You don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I think Fauci's days are numbered. It, that That was really super weak, but the primary concern that I have and the concern that each and every one of us should have is the censorship that's ongoing on social media at the behest of a political party that answers to the pharmaceutical companies, right? So 
if I would say were to find a study that I found interesting and I thought it was interesting and important and I wanted to share it on Facebook and it was peer review. And I gave very little information about it. Here it is. Hey, you guys might be interested in this. Based on the content itself, not on my interpretation, just based on purely just posting it. Facebook has decided that AFP fact, fact check is actually a more reliable source of information than peer-reviewed research, primary literature. Because they will then censor that, they will block that post, they will censor that, and they will block me for three days or who knows what they're going to do. And this is not hypothetical. This is exactly what happened. I'm in Facebook jail right now. I really don't care about, but I'm in Facebook jail right now. Um, I don't care about it because I have a solution, but I'm in Facebook jail right now because I dared to post Neil Miller's new study, which I interviewed him about on my podcast, uh, Unbreaking Science, um, for daring to post primary literature research that's peer reviewed. Because AFP thinks that it's incorrect, I get duct tape across my mouth. That's Facebook's MO, and that those are the marching orders from the Biden administration. So here's, I have a couple of, I have a couple of messages before that, but I'm gonna give you an action item right now. Number one, take this video and share it everywhere on Facebook, because I'm banned. So as a result of them banning me, please blow this up. Okay, that's easy. On Facebook in particular, and tag me and tag 20 people, and let's try to get this thing to blow up. Uh, but number two, I want to send a message to the people who think that they can destroy science. You're not going to succeed. You say that you go with the science. In actuality, you're going with cherry-picked science, the science that you think is correct. Not that you know is correct. You think is correct. And when other studies come forward and they challenge that, Newer studies, better studies, you just dismiss them. By, in that dismissal, you dismiss them by trying to have them retracted. In that dismissal, by deciding that the American public is too stupid to be able to make up their own mind after looking at the, stuff, at the, at the science, you are biasing the knowledge base. And that's, by definition, unscientific. You absolutely are going to fail. So message number one is you're going to fail. That's not going to work. Message number two is the reason why you're not going to fail is because of people like me. People like me who are not only conducting independent research funded only by the public, but better than that, I've created an online university called IPAC-EDU. And in IPAC-EDU, every member of the public can come and get the equivalent of a college education at about 160 to 180 per course. Those are the US dollars. And we're assembling, we're growing faster than I anticipated. It's going exponential in terms of signing on new instructors, adding new courses. We're going to educate the public, person by person by person by person. And we're going to do it online with live lectures. So look at what you've done now. What you've done now is you had this nice thing going with peer-reviewed research that told a particular narrative, a particular story. You could ignore and not emphasize in your summaries and reports to Congress the studies that say something else, like thimerosal is actually dangerous because it harms ERAP1, the protein that we use to actually fold our proteins uh, for antigen presentation in the immune system. And it, or you can bias, you know, the, the, what you put on the CDC website and ignore the studies that show that aluminum is in fact a very potent toxin in vaccines, including my own research that shows with colleagues, which, which shows that uh, aluminum uh, toxicity is so bad on the CDC schedule, the kids in their first year of life are on aluminum toxicity every day of their life. <clears throat> but you can do that. 
But see, then you went too far. You went too far because you had this nice university system. You had the top-down funding structure. Fauci controlled everything in terms of research, went through the NIH. People that went out, out, out of the lanes of what's allowed thought, allowed speech, allowed research, they would get chopped off. <clears throat> Well, that game's over because IPAC takes research from the public, directly from the public, and we do bona fide, independent, peer-reviewed research, number one. Number two, you had a university system, but now who needs it? Who needs the brick and mortar? Who needs the $40,000 a year tuition when you can get the same thing online and have the knowledge base? And we'll call it an uh, IPAC certificate. Ooh, is it accredited? We don't care. Knowledge is knowledge. These people are coming to me because they want to learn. They're coming to IPAC EDU because they want to learn, not because they want a university degree. So as you retract studies, just remember this, as you retract studies and as, as you persecute doctors like Dr. Paul Thomas and Dr. David Brownstein, Dr. Andrew Wakefield, that persecution, Dr. Bob Sears, that persecution becomes a badge of honor. Understand that. You've just made them into spokespersons for objective science and evidence-based medicine. But also understand that as the rest of the public acquires through IPAC-EDU, the equivalent of college educations, they're going to be able to clean your clock because we're teaching them science, they know the fundamentals. We're teaching them logic, reason, how to do analysis, we're teaching them everything. So, and I have medical people that are coming. We, IPAC EDU has medical people that are coming to teach medical courses. So let me just tell you a little bit about the courses that we teach in terms of what they include. They include biology one and two. Biology 2, unlike the college biology 2, actually includes two lectures on immunology. We'll be teaching virology. <clears throat> we'll be teaching microbiology. We'll be teaching genetics. We'll be teaching how to read and interpret a scientific study. We'll be teaching <clears throat> the basis of logic and reason. We'll be teaching spreadsheets so people can analyze data. Um, we are teaching the biology of nutrition. Uh, we're adding courses all the time. We'll have a course on pandas and pants, taught by Dr. Pierre Corey. We'll have a course on the genetic basis of disease and medicine-induced or iotrogenic disease. It is through these kinds of courses, like the course, The History of Law in the West in the United States, that the United States public will gain a firm enough footing on an empirical reality so that your constructivist reality can't be used to fool them anymore. Knowledge is freedom. The students that come empower themselves through knowledge. Our school of thought is called popular rationalism because the people are demanding rationalism. They want evidence-based policies. They want ev evidence-based medicine. They don't want this baloney. It's true because CDC says it's true. It's true because Fauci says it's true. The constructivist narrative, the constructivist philosophy that you have tried to prom promulgate upon public health and bring it into medicine is failing. Public health is face planted in the United States. And it's ugly. And you're angry. I understand. I understand you're upset. But in reality, you've overreached beyond the point where there's any return. There's nothing you can do. Um, the horses have left the barn and we're teaching the entire public. So <clears throat> now that's a message to public health and pharma and Fauci. I want to have I want a message uh, to the United States public. Uh, starting today, you can sign up for an affiliate program and you can earn 10% of all the revenue that you bring to IPAC EDU in the form of new students. So it's very simple. You just go to IPAC-EDU.org, find the affiliate signup page. It's a little bit cloggy right now because we're still working out the details 
you send an email, you'll get a page and then you'll hear from us. But um, yeah, every person, when you promote IPAC-EDU.org and tell them why they should take the courses and you can use this video to do that, um, you'll get 10%. So sign up for it and uh, let's get underway. We have all the time in the world they are not going to succeed. The vaccination program is dead in the United States. They're going to have to round us up, force vaccinate us. They won't do that. They have lost. I'm announcing today, 7-23-2021. They have lost. With Fauci lying to Congress and having to go that far, the only thing they have left is a true police state where they would round us up and force vaccinate us. The only way they can shut down people like myself and Bill Bigtree and Sherry Tenpenny and Sarah G, who do nothing but bring thousands and thousands and thousands of research studies to the public, would be to round us up, arrest us, jail us. I don't know. Just go all the way. Go all out fascist to bring us to the market square, execute us in public so that no scientist ever does science again. How about that? That's your legacy. You want to go that far? They won't go that far. So I'm undaunted. I'm unafraid. Go to ipac-edu.org and uh, sign up for courses. You know, we really have to know what our students, our, our children should be learning. We need to know objectivity. We'll never teach you anything that's mere opinion. We're simply giving you the facts, We're giving you the bona fide research-based education that you have been denied by public institutions. So that's Unbreaking Science for today. Uh, there's a blog article that uh, accompanies this. You can share the blog article and you can share this video and get your affiliate link and uh, let's put IPAC EDU on the map. All right, thanks a lot everyone.